Hey guys, Brent here. In this video, I'm going to take eight images from this month's Bootcamp Challenge, which is all about framing, and I'm going to show you a couple of little things you can do to each image to make them really pop. By the way, if you are not part of Bootcamp, click the link below this video and sign up to the waiting list and I'll let you know when there's space to get in again. And if you are part of Bootcamp, thank you so much for contributing to this month's challenge. Let's get into it. Awesome. So have a look at some of these images, just stunning framing images. I mean, look at this one by Peter. Look at the uh, Empire State Building over there. Anyway, um, already a thousand comments this month and we're not even finished with the month. So thank you guys very much. Oh, three new comments since I've been looking at this. <laughs> Just a few images, random images I grabbed off um, this month's challenge. I'm going to show you one or two quick little things I can do to them to make them pop a little bit more. Um, thank you guys for entering this challenge. And you've all got brilliant images. Uh, I've just noticed a few little things. Now, these are the images that I thought I could improve slightly. There's a whole bunch of really good ones that I can't do anything to. And you guys are making it harder and harder every month for me to find things to improve on uh, because you are doing so great. Thank you very much. So here's one from Valerie. It's a shot she photographed in Arizona. That's a yucca plant. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And it's, be, it's framed by this uh, dead tree over here. Now, this is a great image. Let's see what I can do to it. So firstly, I thought maybe we could enhance the main point of interest, which is this yucca plant over here. So how can I do that? I can use the um, radial filter. My, one of my most favorite filters and I've got it inverted right now so I can drag the radial filter over this area the yucca plant I can hit the O button which kind of shows me the overlay of this filter where it's going to take effect so there's two things I can do here I can either brighten this area where the yucca plant is or I can invert this filter, not invert this filter, and I hit the O key, and you'll notice it works everywhere outside of this uh, radial area over here, and I, or I can darken that area. So looking at the histogram at the top right-hand side, yeah, I notice there's, there's a lot of darks, there's a lot of mid-tones, and there's not too many highlights. So what I've decided here to do here is instead of darkening everything else, because... Well, let me show you what had happened. If I darken everything else, if I take the exposure down of the and the rest of the image, okay, that's quite radical. But you'll notice how the histogram goes way down. So we've got too many darks, I think. So what I'm going to do here, just double click on the exposure slider there. I'm going to invert this filter. And instead of darkening the outside of this filter, I'm going to lighten the inside of this filter. Because of the histogram, that's the reason I'm doing that. So here I can up the exposure slightly of the yucca plant. And you notice I can I, I can go radical here and I can make the histogram more even, but then it just looks too bright, especially the background over there. So double click on exposure. Uh, I wonder if I'll even use exposure. Maybe we'll just go the whites. I'll just up the whites a little bit and up the shadows a bit. And I may even do the clarity. There we go. So that's all I'm going to do here. The feather, I may even feather it a little bit more. And what that does is if I hit the O key, there's more of a gradient from the outside of this radial filter to the middle. And that's the feather bit there. So awesome. That's all I'm going to do to this image. Well done, Valerie. Let's look at the before. There's the before. There's the after. Just a slight little pop so that this yucca plant pops out a little bit more in a great frame over there. Okay, let's go to the next image. This is Richard. This is from San Francisco. And Richard's framing this building with the flag at the top there. And and what I'm doing here is this, this is a two to one. Uh, this is a zoom, two to one. So it may be a little pixelated. These aren't the highest res images I've got. But well done, Richard. You're framing this building and the flag my eye goes directly up to the flag it actually follows the line of the top of the building all the way to the top of that flag there and you framed it with these bushes the this foliage in the foreground so the first thing i thought we could do yeah maybe we could even crop it slightly so i might crop like that just take off that top little bit so that frame 
covers the top part of the image and the bottom. And I know you've already done some of this, Richard, from the feedback in the community. Uh, great. But I'm going to take your original image here. I just want to show a couple other things. So I wanted to darken this frame, the foliage at the bottom here especially. So I'm going to just use the gradient filter here, drag it up a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to darken this area. So let's have a look, uh, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit. Around over there, we may bring the, the shadows down a bit, darken the shadows a bit, and even the whites ever so slightly. You don't want to go too far, otherwise it's going to work on that sky too in the background there. So there we go. That's just a really easy thing to do. Let's get a look at the before and after. You can see there's a, it's a little bit darker in the foliage, but now here's something that's really powerful. If you go to the hue, saturation, luminance, panel down here and you go to the luminance area you can actually bring down the luminance but basically the brightness of certain colors in this image so let's what happens if i bring down the brightness of just the greens in this image so let's drag the greens down look at what happens okay that's that's huge all right so i might drag the greens down i can drag it all the way if i want there we go so there's a simple little trick to bring the brightness of just one color down in this image. And what does it do? There's the before, there's the after. It makes the framing a little bit darker and then you see the building and the flag. And I may have overdone it a little bit there. So let's go back to the hue because I can see little uh, halos around the edges of those leaves. So we may go like this. He has, there's another way you can do this. You can click on this little uh, adjuster tool, click on that. And you can go to the area on the image that you want, click and then drag downwards. And what it does is it drags, you'll notice the sliders on the right and the luminance. As I drag down and up, it drags the green and the yellow because the area I touched on is green and yellow. So I might do that instead. There we go. Great. Well done, Richard. Excellent image. There's the before. There's the after. Plus I cropped it a little bit. Okay, let's go to the next one. Kit. Christopher, I think, uh, where are you from? North Carolina, I think. This is off his back deck. He's photographing, he's trying framing through these trees over here. Saw this water bird, and I thought, yes, so there's something we can do here, I'm sure. And I know this, you know, this is more of a sketch shot for you. I noticed that bottle in there, everyone else noticed it too. <laughs> and I'll just show you a quick way to get rid of that. So, it's a great image. We've, uh, we're framing it with this, this foliage in the foreground here. It's even framed again, this water bird, this heron, uh, by the foliage at the top there and this and these dead pieces of wood at the bottom here. But that bottle, that plastic, is distracting me because the heron's the very light and that's very light too. So what can we do to remove that? All right, so we can use the spot removal tool over here. And we can either use the clone or the heel part of the spot removal area. I've used the, I've decided to use the heel bit and I've made it, made my brush pretty big with a quite a large feather of 86. You'll notice there's two circles there. The middle one is the area that's uh, healed and the, and the outer one is the feather where it goes. So if I click on that area, okay, it's first, it's going to choose an area at the top here to clone it out. Uh, okay, let's um, let's move my area over here, my brush, and then I can I can move this down to this area over here, I think. And the problem with I'm only using a mouse, so if I had a if I had a pad with a pen, I could do this a lot easier. There we go. So that's just a quick little. Uh, heel and it's not the best but look at the before and look at the after yes you can see the area that I've healed over there but you know what if you're looking at this for the first time you'd never notice that and to me this image is so much stronger now now that that distraction is gone so well done Christopher excellent image 
All right, what can we do here? This is Christine, Western Australia. Great image. I love how this uh, kookaburra is framed between these two branches over here. You do use a super shallow depth of field, f2.8 on a 200 millimeter lens. Great. The thing I noticed about this is the eye of the kookaburra. So let's just make sure we got, yep, we got uh, the, the before image. Let's click in a little closer. Now this is 200% of the image, so it's going to be a little pixelated. But what can we do here? We can use the radial filter again. I can drag it over the eye over here. Okay, hit the O button so that we know which area, the overlay, which area we're going to be working on. And I can up the shadows a little bit. There we go. Maybe crank them way up the shadows. Uh, the whites up a little bit. Yeah. And the sharpness. Let's do the sharpness a little bit. Yeah, just a bit. There we go. Great. All right. So what did we do? The before, the after, before and after. See that just that little touch makes a huge difference. Let's go to the wider image, the before and the after. It's like someone's had a reflector and they just reflected a little bit of light or you've had a flash on your long lens camera and you've popped in a little bit of flash into the eye. Makes the image so much stronger to me. So that's a great image anyway, <laughs> Christine. Um, I could have done nothing to that. It was still, still would have been a great image. Here's an image from Diana from Connecticut. This is also in a backyard, I think. It's a hummingbird moth and she's photographed it on a 300 millimeter lens, one two thousandth of a second, so a really fast shutter speed to capture that, uh, the moth flying, capture its wings, uh, wide open aperture, but I noticed the noise, so she's shooting at 1600 ISO, which is a reasonably high ISO, and there's quite a bit of noise in the background there, so I'm gonna go to 200% on this image, you can see the noise over there. So what can we do about this noise? So we go into the details panel over here and we can sharpen this image. Let's do the sharpening first. All right, so we'll, we'll sharpen it a bit, but you notice when I sharpen it, what does it do to the noise? It sharpens the noise like crazy. So we got to use the masking again. So remember to hold on your option or alt key and then drag this to the right and you'll notice on the left, everything's white. That means I am sharpening everything. And as I move this to the right, the blacks block the sharpening and the whites let through the sharpening. So I can move it all the way down here, pretty much where I'm just sharpening the moth and not the background. Let go. And now I'm sharpening the moth and not the background. There's still a lot of noise in the background there. What can we do about that? We can use the luminance noise reduc reduction. So let's uh, crank this to the right a little bit until we see there's a bit of noise reduction. Uh, let's see. Uh, we might put, take the detail down a little bit. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just playing with these sliders. I don't really... I'm just having a look. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's hit the before and the after. Yes, look at that. It's a lot smoother the background now. We can use the color noise reduction. I don't know if that's going to have any effect or not. Not too much. Okay, we'll just leave it like that. So that's probably the best I can get. Let's go back to the full view. There's the before, there's the after. It's looking a lot smoother, but it's also smoothed out the hummingbird moth. So what can we do about that? We can use the radial filter again. Um, I can drag it over the this area of the moth, the body, and the eye. Okay, let's hit the O, which, yeah, that's going to work on that area. Perfect. And we can, what can we do to this? I can give it more clarity. I can crank the clarity up a little bit. And maybe the sharpness up a little bit more, just to make it pop just a slight bit more. There we go. All right, let's zoom in a little bit more. We'll go to this and we will, let's see what it does. That's without the radio filter, that's with the radio filter. It just adds a little bit more pop to that moth. Okay, perfect. So there's the before. 
Diana, there's the after. It's just smoothed it out a little bit. Great image. And by the way, the framing on this image is unbelievable. Look how it's framed. Down on the left here by the, the flower, the, the flowers in the background at the bottom and on the right. So it's drawing your eye right into this moth. That's what framing is all about. It's about drawing the viewer to your main point of interest. All right, and the last image for this six image critique, no, not six, one, two, three, four, yes, yeah, six image critique is Cindy, um, and this is an image she photographed in the Maldives. Now, I've been to a lot of tropical places. When you're photographing with such bright beaches where the, where the sand is so bright, what often happens is the sky goes really dark blue especially if you've got a polarizing filter on it's a tough one because uh, i always tell people to use a polarizing filter when you are photographing water and sky so you can see right into the water and there's no glare the only problem with that is if you've got a very very bright foreground it makes the the sky go a kind of a muddy blue and the way to overcome this is to overexpose by one stop when you're photographing but there's something we can do here in post so there's quite a lot actually we can do in post over here. So the first thing I would do, Cindy, with your image is I'll just crank the shadows up a little, let's go about 28 or so. All right, so already, before or after, already it's taken out some of the darkness in that sky and it's given us more information in the shadows in the foreground here. Now this is a great frame, fr framing shot. She's framing the these uh, cottages, um, little shacks on the beach, not shacks, I suppose, <laughs> beautiful uh, bungalows that are going out onto this, uh, into this lagoon with this palm tree, a classic tropical island shot, beautiful. All right, so after, after that, maybe what I, I may do is I may crop just slight, ever so slightly. I'll go like this. That way my bungalows are... In the rule of thirds, you see the bottom left-hand third over there. And I might even go down a little over here. There we go. That's something I would do. Bring the view in a little bit closer. All right, so what else can we do to this image? Let's work on that sky a little bit. Okay. So we'll go back to the hue saturation luminance area. And I'll click on the little picker adjustment picker there i can click on the sky and i can drag it well not down i'm going to drag it up <laughs> the other way so i'll drag it up and you'll notice what it's doing it's taking the blues and the purples to the right uh, it's increasing the luminance basically the brightness of the blues and the purples so there we go Look at that already. I can click back there to get out of that. So let's go to the before and after. Look at what it's done <laughs> to that sky. So already that's looking a lot better. Now, do we do anything to the main point of interest, these bungalows, shacks uh, down on the on the water there? Yes. What can we do to this to them? Well, let's have a look. We can, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the uh, paint tool there we go and over here i've got the auto mask on so what it's going to do is automatically going to mask area so if i start drawing or painting on the browns it's automatically going to stick with the browns hopefully let's see i'll just paint around i'm just clicking once and i'm just painting really rough and fast Let's see what happens. Let's hit the O button. Yes, look at that. It's grabbed just the brown areas and it hasn't gone outside the 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 outline where the where the sky meets the the thatched roofs. Okay. So what can we do over here? How can we make this jump out a little bit more? I'm thinking maybe a bit more clarity, yeah. Crank that up a bit. And maybe do do we go more contrasty? No. Uh, maybe just a bit. What about the blacks? What what can we do? The black? Oh no 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 no. We don't want that. Maybe the whites a little more. Uh, maybe the shadows. Yeah, the shadows. That's it. So you play around with the sliders until you find something that's going to work. We've got clarity, 
and we may even give it a little bit more sharpness that area there cool that's it so let's click that little switch over there to turn it off and on so we can see what that is doing my little paint paintbrush is doing it's just bringing a little more detail in the shadows to those bungalows over there so let's go back let's have a look at the before and the after so there's i think these little adjustments make a huge difference in these images thanks guys for all the comments from the last video where i took uh, six this is eight images i've got two more <laughs> okay never mind i must be losing it <laughs> all right just another one from nick uh, what did I do over here? Um, Nick, let's go to the develop module. Um, yes, so I've already, I've already edited this one. So here we go, imported it. What did I do here, Nick? I think it's the, this, okay, this is a really interesting image because the kookaburra has got the that highlight right behind it over there. So if we make the kookaburra too bright, it's going to blend into that highlight. And then it's got great framing too with these uh, two trees in the background there. But I just want to give the kookaburra's chest a little more, uh, I don't know, I'll, let's see. I'll, I'll move the radial filter around there. Let's bring out the shadows a little bit. Yes, the shadows, maybe the whites, crank the whites up a little bit. What about contrast? Do we give it a little more contrast maybe? Yes. And there we go. All right, so there's that's one thing we can do before or after. So you see how the kookaburra just jumps a little bit more. I don't want to make the kookaburra too bright to blend into that highlight back there. And maybe because this is a framing challenge, we might just darken those areas there. So I might take down the blacks or the shadows down. Just the no. Let's take the blacks down on that framing element over there. Yes, and we might do the whoops. We might do the same over here with the gradient tool. We might just take the blacks down a little bit more there. All right, and that's pretty much all I would do there, Nick. To your image, let's look at the before and the after. Kookaburra is just jumping a little bit more, and we've enhanced the framing around it all right so for the last image it is going to be eight images gina this is this is one that um I, it was pretty tough to to shoot so here's the before and here's the after so gina photographed the moon through trees and on my screen it was quite difficult that's the before and that's the after to see the moon and how it's framed so what did i do over here let's go over here and have a look what i've done is i've upped the contrast a bit I've reduced the highlights in this image and then I've upped the shadows a little bit and the blacks. So that's all I've really done is just to enhance that framing around the moon. So the great shot and I've given it a little bit more clarity. So pretty much that's it. So there we go, guys. Eight images, not six. <laughs> Must be losing it. Um, notice how I've done a few little things to make these images pop uh, a little bit more thanks so much i'd love some feedback below this video let me know if this is helping you with your photography and your post processing thanks guys also remember to sign up to the bootcamp waiting list and i'll let you know when it opens again and if you're in bootcamp thank you so much loving everything that's happening inside there this is brent catch you later bye